गुड मॉर्निंग फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू राज मल्होत्राज आई एस सो गाइज वी आर अबाउट टू स्टार्ट द सेशन जस्ट गिव मी अ वन मिनट हेयर आई एल अपलोड द पी डी एफ फॉर टूडे सेशन so the pdf has been uploaded uploaded you can download the pdf from our telegram group aap ja ke pdf download kar sakte ho good morning aisha nazim saurabh good morning happy diwali saurabh vivek good morning ram bharosh raj good morning okay so sufficient number of people have already joined us and we are about to start the session chaliye so let's see what exactly is there for us in today's newspaper happy diwali to all okay so dekhte hain aaj ki akhbar mein hamare liye kya khas hai so just give me a minute here so uh, world leaders like they have made this pledge to save the world and this is related to your glasgow cop 26 okay uh, india china russia yet to sign up on few things we are in agreement with these countries specifically the developed countries on few areas there are disagreements okay so this is the important news here important in the sense india has already announced okay india has already announced the net zero year now this is the really critical thing announcing a net zero year why i am saying this particular thing because earlier there were some speculations that india might not announce this particular thing this particular target okay ki shayad india ye target jo hai announce na kare but right now uh, india has done that and it's a good news for us okay news for us as well as for others why it is important so right now if you look into the amount of emissions that india generates okay that's the critical part here critical in the sense right now india generates near about 6.6% of the global emissions okay global emissions whatever they are 6.6% they are being generated by india there are uh, say china it generates 23% of total us it generate 13% of the uh, total emissions that we have india is at the third spot okay india is at the third spot but you if you look into the future aspect of it now this is bound to increase if india is carrying out it, its development activity if india continues its development activity it is bound to increase okay it won't be an end here 6.6 it won't be an end here in the coming year when we are going to install our manufacturing units when we are like going to have more industrial activity in your country definitely you can easily figure it out that this 6.6% is going to increase this 6.6% is going to increase that's the critical part here okay that's the critical part here now this is the important development important in the sense that okay definitely we are serious about climate change because it is not just about uh, development it is also about you know saving lives lives in the sense india is already vulnerable look at the catastrophic events that are going on in india uttarakhand flood chennai flood you you pick up any year one year like you will find two three multiple events droughts might be there sometimes there are droughts in maharashtra and other areas okay so this is how it's a trouble and we have to do something so right now india is serious about it and we have announced few things related to it okay so 90 countries they like they can they basically they are in agreement to this particular thing india china russia yet to sign up okay other countries have signed multiple things now leaders here uh, they pledged to stop deforestation by the end of decade 
and slash the emissions of greenhouse gases methane to help slow climate change okay so basically climate change you have to slow it down you have to make sure that the temperature doesn't increase beyond 1.5 degrees celsius now inability of the major powers so far to agree more broadly on rapid reductions in the use of fossil fuels okay now this is the major trouble here when you are going to rule out or you can say when you are going to reduce your dependence on fossil fuels that's the prime focus of all the nations because you need to understand fossils are such thing and specifically coal we are dependent on coal over the night you cannot completely reduce your dependence here we have to be realistic about it okay and this is what is happening here so right now countries they are not on agreement that how they are going to reduce their dependence on fossil fuel because it is considered as the main cause of global warming emissions from fossil fuels they are considered as the main cause of global warming but developed nations as well as the developing nations they cannot overnight reduce their dependence on fossil fuels okay so you have live example united states now us may make so much noise related to climate change and all but 60 percent of their energy electricity that they are getting is from fossil fuel only okay so that's the point here now other thing other important part decision that has been taken was related to global methane pledge okay it announced that the amount of methane has to be reduced okay that now covers emission from two-third of the global economy methane you have to reduce reduce its number okay so signatories are brazil one of the five biggest emitters of methane which 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 is generated by a cow digestive system in landfill waste in oil and gas production there are other emitters as well india russia china we have not signed up this particular pledge okay australia has said that it will not back the pledge now that's the present situation F only one country that is brazil they are among the signatory of reducing the emission of methane other emitters they are still not on the same page they are still not on the same page that's the major concern here so you can easily figure it out now brazil uh, is there okay china russia india and australia they have not signed this particular pledge here and other than that look at the situation in india now will we ever be able to sign this particular pledge because there is a farming community in your country who are dependent on cattle who are dependent on dairy industry so is it possible on our part that we will ever sign this particular agreement that's the point here okay so you have to look into the domestic conditions of india and that's why whenever we say that these developed nations they have to provide us with some funds unko hame kuch na kuch paisa dena padega that's the important part here okay they have to provide some money some funds to us that's the critical point here because there is a cost associated with it so who will bear the cost definitely these developed nations they have to uh, take some share here okay so uh, 8 19 billion for forest now in 2020 world lost 2.5 lakh square kilometer of forests according to the global forest watch the the conservation ch charity wwf estimates that 27 football fields of forest are lost every minute okay now this is the scale at which deforestation is going on so till the time we are not going to address these particular developments okay so we have to definitely address these particular developments like deforestation and all so ye hame karna padega and that will require money and this is what we are saying that we are demanding that at least 19 billion dollars should be managed specifically for the forestation activity okay so this is the point that they are making now the agreement expands a commitment by 40 countries as part of new york declaration for of forest okay now these are the factual things which are important for you you have to note it down okay all these particular terms now this new york declaration on forest is coming out okay new york declaration on forest is coming out you have to note it down that this is what it is uh, suggesting that the promise is type ka bana raha hai, okay that's the point here so we'll move to the next part now let's look into this particular thing set up a police complaint body says the NHRC okay now that's the important development
why i am saying that this is the important development because at least some agency is making some noise okay this particular judgment the prakash singh judgment this is not new it has been pending from many years and implementation of prakash singh judgment the government is not bringing any implementation effort implementation is also being carried out with the effort of supreme court okay that's the critical part here now 15 years after supreme court issued directions of police reform nhrc okay has asked the union home ministry and state governments to set up police complaint authorities okay now you have to look into the recommendations of prakash singh judgment so you you should know all the recommendations here that what exactly this prakash singh judgment okay talks about now mr prakash singh he himself is an retired ips officer okay now he filed a case in supreme court and he fought for the police reform so he this judgment is related to your police reform okay now this is what they are saying prakash singh committee what exactly they are saying here okay that multiple recommendations are there one recommendation says that there should be a police complaint authority police complaint authority should be there okay other recommendations is about an panelment of dgp and panelment of dgp okay it means that dgp should be selected by a panel okay dgp should be selected by a panel so how what's the process right now upsc sends the name okay this has already been implemented and upsc it sends the name three four ips officers their names are sent by upsc out of these three fours uh, three four the the like the respective state government they are going to select the particular person as their dgp okay other thing that they are saying they are saying that establish a national and a state security commission okay national and state security commission police complaint authority i already told you about this particular thing see why this police police complaint authority is required okay so please pay attention here so right now if you have any grievances if you have any grievances against any policeman you want to report any crime committed by a policeman okay so where will you go ye where will you go okay you have only option that is you have only option that is available to you and that option is that option is police only if a policeman is committing a crime if he is not doing his duty there is dereliction of duty in that scenario where will you go so you have only choice you will have to go to police okay now the point here is that is it you can can you expect the justice from the police will they work will they investigate or the investigation will be purely fair and fine against their own colleague apne hi colleague ke against kya wo investigation karenge those are the serious concerns here okay and that's why definitely we need we need police complaint authority where you can report if you have any grievance related to the police okay this is what the prakash singh judgment says there are other recommendations also so i am leaving it for to your homework you have to search it out okay you have to just google it you will get the recommendations and those recommendations are really important for your police reforms topic okay now other thing that nhrc is saying nhrc is saying that there is a need to set up police complaint authority at the state and the district level okay nhrc also said that ministry of home affairs and law ministry should consider implementing the recommendations of 113th law commission report which says that section 11b should be added to indian evidence act as it would ensure that if a person sustain injuries in custody it is presumed that injuries were inflicted by the police okay now this is the most dangerous recommendations that they are saying please please pay attention they are saying that 114b should be included in evidence act what it is demanding it is demanding that there should be a presumption there should be a presumption that if a person is injured in the lockup okay if the person is injured in the lockup then it should be considered that police has caused that particular pain or that particular uh, 
uh, you can say injury that's the dangerous thing here because definitely we know that we have to stop we have to stop custodial death okay aapko custodial deaths ko do you have stop karna hai i am in complete agreement with you with this particular thing okay we have to reduce the torture we have to do something to reduce the torture but you what you are doing it can be misused by the criminals it can be misused by the criminals okay now if some criminal is trying to injure himself there can be a suicidal tendency if he tries to injure himself definitely uh, he can definitely like wrongly implicate police of that particular police station us police station ki police ko wrongly implicate kiya ja sakta hai kisi case mein that's the concern here okay that's the concern here but the demand has been made and law commission also must have thought something about it that's why they have come out with this recommendation isliye unhone ye recommendation di hogi theek hai na ki ye mana jaye ki injury jo hai police ne ki hai and the onus will be on police to prove that this injury has not been caused by them okay right now it is very easy to prove because cctv footages are there theek hai na cctv and all the all footages are available okay and judges are also like they do like uh, respect such things okay that working of a police is difficult in this country so we'll move to the next part now other than that there is nothing much kuch khas nahi hai yahan pe okay so Pakistan's NSA to skip Indian conference on Afghanistan. So India has announced uh, this particular conference, okay, to bring stability and development in Afghanistan, and that's why India has invited all the neighbors. But Pakistan is uh, not. Be, Pakistan will not be part of this particular conference. Okay, so this is what they are saying. Uh, definitely, the process should be inclusive, as inclusive as it should, as it is possible. Okay. तो ये सारी चीजें करनी जरूरी हैं, ठीक है ना सो अदर देन दैट देर इज नथिंग मच विल मूव टू द एडिटोरियल सेक्शन सीधा एडिटोरियल सेक्शन में चलेंगे एंड लेट्स सी व्हाट एक्जैक्टली इज देयर फॉर अस इन द एडिटोरियल्स, ओके सो हे वी आर नाउ ट्रेड क्लाइमेट द पेवेट फॉर इंडिया यूएस टाइज ओके नाउ द ट्रेड एंड द क्लाइमेट दे बोथ कैन बी द एरिया वेयर इंडिया यूएस ओके दे कैन कोऑपरेट विद ईच अदर दैट्स द इंपॉर्टेंट पार्ट है and there are differences also okay there are differences also you should know about this particular thing right now uh, india and us both are in wto wto in the sense the issue is going on related to the panels of solar panel okay related to the panels of solar panel and the matter went to wto so ye mudde hain these are the disputes and these are the disputes which should be handled as early as possible this is what this editorial is pointing out okay so let's look into this so this this editorial is saying that definitely there are two areas where we can cooperate with each other climate change as well as the trade okay uh, we are making joint efforts in multiple areas that is fine we we want to create free and open indo pacific okay definitely we want to counter china as well on these particular parameters on these particular issues india and us their both both their interests are aligning okay our interests are aligning with us but still there is a long walk long distance that we have to cover okay there is a long distance that we have to cover we have to collaborate in multi, especially in two areas climate and trade this is what we have to do now why it is straight because world over there is a demand that they have to reduce their dependence on china okay reducing their dependence on china specifically for from the for the supply chains okay and india can be a destination which can provide alternative to china and climate change definitely we need cooperation because india need technology india need technology india need funds okay india need technology india need funds so by without doing that definitely we won't be able to like fight the climate change so right now the shared concerns among like china provide india us partnership of much needed impetus okay so whatever small issues are there we have clarity in our mind that we have to cooperate with us that's why we have increased our import of defense equipment from united states we are importing more defense equipment from united states right now okay that's the present development here so other thing as how interrelated climate and trade are to secure india us leadership globally okay that's the point here what risk being lost is a reckoning with how interrelated climate change and trade are now things are really important see you need to understand one thing india 
okay which can be a market for us india will be a market for us us wants to do business with india other thing is that we have a middle class okay their number is going to increase remarkably so the, the the size of middle class in your country it is going to increase remarkably urbanization is going to increase industrialization is going to increase it means that in the future there will be more emissions aane wale time mein emissions bhi zyada honge okay that's the concern here that's the major concern here theek hai na emissions bhi aapke yahan pe zyada honge okay so definitely you need the technology and us can provide us that technology us can help us in building the consensus globally global consensus banane mein hamari madad kar sakta hai okay that's the point here now us special presidential envoy for our climate change john kerry he has visited india multiple times so these are the positive things that we have so india has already announced net zero by 2070 we will have net zero emissions okay uh, definitely it's a good move but there are people in us who might not be happy with india's initiative okay because definitely they are expecting more from us but we also have to look into the developmental rights of indians us is putting pressure on us that india should do something more aur zyada hame karne ki zarurat hai but we have to be realistic you have a section of population and you have to develop them for that you have to carry out your emission activity okay but still we have to move towards clean energy hum ye nahi keh rahe ki bilkul hum zero kar denge definitely we will address this particular thing by moving towards cleaner greener ways okay there are some areas as well in one, in which we have differences so we can easily resolve those issues first okay so india and us could find opportunities to align their climate and trade approaches better starting with the resolution of their disputes okay so we i told you about this thing so we had a dispute going on on sonar panels in um, world trade organization okay so the two countries could also chart a path that allows trade to flow for transitional energy sources such as for fuel ethanol fuel ethanol is one thing in on which both the countries can cooperate why it is there that like fuel ethanol ye kaise ho sakta hai because india is looking forward to blend our petrol with ethanol simultaneously us is one of the exporter of ethanol so definitely we need ethanol and us provides ethanol okay so this is how this is how we can definitely we can definitely cooperate with each other that's the point here okay that's the point here other thing is that presently look at the situation india currently bans import of fuel ethanol now definitely india can do something regarding that we have to lift that ban then then only the ethanol will be like reaching india okay so this is the point these things should be addressed right now we should have a shared strategic interest okay uh we have to coordinate on multiple areas okay we have to make some adjustment like carbon border adjustment mechanisms okay how you are going to uh, make this carbon a tradable entity carbon certificates and all these things are really important and that's why we need to cooperate with us right now okay so trade is also linked to it because see if you want clean technology and we want that clean technology to come to us through exports so whatever the protectionist tendencies that are prevailing across the world and especially within us and india relationship you have to resolve that thing first okay you have to resolve that thing first so climate and trade are interrelated in many ways from commercial dissemination of cutting edge carbon mitigation and adaptation products and technology to the carbon emissions that come with the transport of goods and humans okay so in across the sectors in across the areas you have to reduce your carbon emission this is what they are pointing out this is what they are pointing out and they are saying that we have to coordinate with each other you have to coordinate your policy you have to develop the relation to make a joint effort to fight this climate change okay this is what they are making here. this is what they are saying but somehow there are some issues as well there are some issues you have to resolve those issues first okay then only we will be able to fight it out this is what they are saying so we'll move to the next part now let's see what else is there so covid 19 as a tale of job hardship and marginalization okay so primarily this is related to the like plea of women how uh, women migrant workers in west asia okay 
women migrant workers in west asia in middle east in uh, these arab nations what are the issues that they are facing right now and how covid has also aggravated their problems okay so there were multiple issues that were prevailing but covid covid has definitely aggravated their problem covid ne unki problem aggravate kar di hai that's the point here okay this is what this editorial is mentioning so let's look into this what they are saying so we know that like indian women migrants they are working over there but look at the safeguards that they have they don't have gender centric right based safeguards okay they are vulnerable to exploitation and they are exploited they are vulnerable to exploitation there are multiple things okay so all those things are covered here now gcc countries definitely they have near about 23 million migrant workers okay and these migrant workers they face lot of issues lot of problems uh, related to discrimination and women workers they also face such issues here okay and most of the workers are from the south asia south asian region that's the point here they are working on contracts the contracts can be easily removed they are working on contracts and those contracts can be easily removed okay that's the point here that's the point here now there are multiple things multiple events which shows that they are not in a good situation right now and somehow the covid has increased the vulnerability covid ne vulnerability ko increase kar diya hai why it is important see you need to understand there are multiple cases of abuse exploitation okay under wages or they will be forced to work without pay that's the problem here okay they will be forced to work without pay as well so these are the vulnerabilities of women migrant workers here now they have like there are many nurses indian nurses who are working in west asia who are working in middle east what happened like during the covid thing they were asked to go to their home okay unko leave pe jaane ke liye bol diya tha that's the point here means hospitals were not paying them specifically it happened with the private hospitals okay that was the case there so itna problematic tha wahan pe theek hai na they were not provided with ppe kit as there was a shortage they were not provided with masks as there was a shortage of everything okay this was the situation which was prevailing at that time their spouses they lost their job their family they lost like what whosoever family member was working there they all lost their job that was the tough time that was the tough time during the spread of corona okay that was the tough time during the spread of corona so now this is how they are more vulnerable like and susceptible to exploitation uh, some of them might be semi skilled unskilled okay so definitely they are vulnerable there because they don't have way out they don't have any other way out their passport their passport might be kept by their you can say employer their passport their passport might be kept by the employer that's the point here that's the trouble something here okay so definitely what they are saying that there should be some initiative we need to protect our citizen okay we need to protect our citizen we have to come out with some policies we have to talk to those nations we have to come out with some policies we have to talk to those nations that's the point here okay that's the point here so before moving ahead let me address your doubt um uh, ai jo jos uh, if india announces net zero emission we have already announced it okay is it partly a fact of our indian economy or is it sir is it partly partially affect our indian economy see announcing see what the doubt is that india has announced net zero okay see you need to understand by 2070 we will be achieving this now net zero means what this will be your graph we will allow the emissions to peak okay by this particular year this will be a peak after that we will reduce it this is the whole idea and subsequently we will make it to net zero net zero doesn't mean zero emission it means that you will develop a capacity where you can you can take away the emission okay from the atmosphere that process is not that sequestration okay sequestration either uh, by afforestation ya to aap afforestation karoge okay or by reducing the emissions this is what you have to do that's the point here now whatever we are going to 
do here that will require technology okay that will require funding that's the point here because if you want your private industry to adopt clean energy green energy okay clean energy green energy whatever substitutes you are talking about they are not going to come at a cheaper price they will be costly okay they will be costly and that cost will be a trouble for a small industrial units suppose say with for msme now you tell me one thing msme their profit margins are also very less right now unke already profit margin kam hote hain it means that you are going to make their product uncompetitive by adding additional cost additional burden on them That's the problem here. आप उन पे एक एडिशनल बर्डन डाल दोगे कि आपको क्लीन टेक्नोलॉजी अडॉप्ट करनी है उनके प्रॉफिट मार्जिन ऑलरेडी कम है विल दे बी एबल टू शिफ्ट टू क्लीन एनर्जी ग्रीन एनर्जी देर इज अ फंडामेंटल डाउट ओवर इट विदाउट द गवर्नमेंट सपोर्ट विदाउट द सपोर्ट फ्रॉम इंटरनेशनल यूनिट एंड अदर थिंग इज दैट दीज कंट्रीज डेवलप्ड नेशन दे आर नॉट रेडी टू शेयर देयर टेक्नोलॉजी विद अस so if they are not sharing technology with us definitely we won't be able to apply those technologies okay that's the point here that's the point here okay so we'll move to the next part now so here we are on this particular page there is nothing much kuch khas nahi hai yahan pe okay so let's move to this part here now defense acquisition committee clears proposal worth 8000 or 7965 crore okay uh we have already cancelled one uh, uh, particular deal with us because of the high cost and limited transfer of technology okay see transfer of technology is really really important why 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 we are emphasizing that transfer of technology uh is required look at the situation right now we are dependent on imports for our weapons okay now weapon imports doesn't mean that game ends with one transaction there are spare parts as well okay for spare parts again you are dependent on others you are dependent on some other third country now suppose if there is a war between india and china you will require those spare parts okay you will require those spare part and now if other countries they refuse to send those spare pa- spare parts whatever we have bought that will be dysfunctional jo bhi aapne kharida hai wo kisi kaam ka nahi rahega स्पेयर पार्ट्स आपको चाहिए बट दीज कंट्रीज दे कैन रिफ्यूज यू ओके और देर कैन बी डिले अब नाउ वॉर लाइक सिचुएशन इज गोइंग ऑन हाउ कैन यू अफोर्ड अ डिले दैट्स द पॉइंट हेयर ओके सो दैट्स वाई इट इज इंपॉर्टेंट दैट यू नीड टू हैव द मैन्युफैक्चरिंग यूनिट्स टेक्नोलॉजिकल ट्रांसफर यूनिट्स इन विद इन योर कंट्री यू नीड टू हैव द प्रोडक्शन लाइन विद इन योर कंट्री दैट्स द क्रिटिकल पार्ट हेयर ओके that's the critical part and that's why we are emphasizing if there is a limited transfer of technology definitely this is not in our interest hamare liye kuch khas nahi bachta uske andar okay you have to develop your own domestic capacity that's the important thing here other than that okay let's look into this now center to scrap the cast based payment for mg narega now it was observed that certain section of the society certain castes okay uh, they used to get the funds or say their wages within 15 to 20 days okay as the government used to make special arrangement for them unke liye special arrangement jo hai wo diya gaya tha okay that's the point here so as the special arrangement was made for them uh, other caste groups they were not happy with that okay and that's why now government has decided that they are going to scrap this caste based payments for mg narega it shouldn't have been done okay it shouldn't have been done how can you keep a particular section at disadvantage if there are laborers they are working together everyone should get the wages on a particular time okay that's the point here so other than that by doing that this is not sufficient because government has to address other issues also issues related to delay in payment okay all those things should be addressed here wo sari cheeze address karni zaruri hai theek hai na that's the point here okay so that's the point here so uh before moving ahead let me address a doubt okay cupid ligo is asking sir do you think 2070 commitment of a goal of zero emission would put more pressure in india it can lead to more burden isn't 2030 goal enough for now okay no see you need to understand you need to have a vision we still got 50 years now 50 years is a significant time okay where you can provide development to your people also and you can definitely adopt the clean and green technology 50 years is a decent time 
so there is no harm in that so definitely we have to do something okay uh aisha sheik sir uh, sir technology what type of technology technology can be related to anything green technology clean technology basically you have to reduce your emission okay so any technology which reduces the emission there is no specific technology here okay it can be related to multiple thing now if you want to reduce emission in automobiles it means that you need better engines okay you need technology related to uh, like engines which are working on electricity okay so this is how the technology works if you are like generating if you are talking about generation of electricity definitely generation of electricity should be from non fossil ye technology theek hai na so uh, developed countries are using for net zero okay so these technologies basically they are clean technologies ye bahut efficient technologies hain so they already have efficiency but that is that that's the costly affair here okay ab unhone innovation karke koi cheez banayi hai so they will not share it with you it is as like simple as that why will they share it with you okay they will definitely uh, they will look for india to buy a few things they want to sell those technology to us they want money out of that okay india is saying don't make money out of that that's the point here so other than that there is nothing much here this is the political news and uh, political page uh, okay so india to help countries prone to climate change now this is the initiative that has been announced modi launches infrastructure for resilient island states okay so basically we have we are looking forward to provide infrastructure to these island nations we will help them in the development of infrastructure for that this initiative has been launched okay so that they can they can develop resilience so that they can develop resilience that's the point here so uh, there is one other development here now india calls for hike in climate finance to 1 trillion dollars okay so that's the quite a, quite a large number here but this is what is required itna to chahiye ओके सो वन सन वन वर्ल्ड वन ग्रिड फॉर सीमलेस एनर्जी सी दिस इज व्हाट दे आर सेइंग सो दिस इज अनदर इनिशिएटिव दैट हैज बीन टेकन अप बाय इंडिया एंड यूके हियर ओके सो लाइक देयर आर ग्रुप ऑफ गवर्नमेंट्स कॉल्ड ग्रीन ग्रिड इनिशिएटिव ओके ग्रीन ग्रिड इनिशिएटिव ठीक है ना सो ये जो है एक ग्रुप ऑफ गवर्नमेंट का है गवर्नमेंट्स आर देयर दे आर जॉइनिंग देयर हैंड्स ओके लाइक इट वाज अनाउंस्ड ड्यूरिंग दिस पर्टिकुलर like cop 26 here so more countries they are joining it okay more countries they are joining it the idea is that uh, you you have to develop the renew, non renewable re, renewable and non renewable sources and you have to share it with each other okay that's the point here so primarily they are focusing on the solar energy here zyada focus hum solar pe kar rahe hain multiple countries they receive sunlight here so why can't we jointly make some arrangement okay why can't we jointly make some arrangement where uh, we can share things with each other through the grid interconnectivity okay all those things are called here now this is what the game is that we want to tap the solar energy here and we should know that like and have and it travels seamlessly across the border okay this is what was announced so green grid initiative definitely these things are also interrelated so this is what they are saying here so we'll move to the next part now now india's climate commitments are bold but meeting them will be a challenge this is what experts are pointing out okay so let's look into this because this is important here uh, this can be a direct question for you in your for your gs paper 3 okay that the, what government is doing and how what are the challenges to meet out their commitments this is what the particular editorial this particular article is pointing out okay so definitely countries are joining hand we have already announced few things here so these are the commitment made by india right now so modi ji has said that uh, india's no non fossil energy capacity will reach 500 gigawatt by 2030 okay it will meet uh, 50% of its energy requirement with renewable energy by 2030 it will reduce its total projected carbon emission by a billion ton by 2030 reduce the carbon intensity of its economy to less than 45% and achieve net zero by 2070 okay so net zero is a year when a country's carbon emission are offset by taking out the equivalent carbon from the atmosphere okay whatever carbon you are generating equivalent of that you will be taking it out from the atmosphere that is the net zero okay balance is zero now there are some troubles here okay there are some challenges those challenges are important 
the point here is that it will be difficult to make an initiative so you have to specify a peaking year you have to specify a peaking year following that year your emissions should go down okay following that year your emissions should go down now this is what they are announcing so peaking year we are yet to announce but it has been said that by 2040 should be the peaking year for us okay 2040 should be the peaking year for us and India would have to reduce emission intensity by 85 percent it will be quite large a number okay other thing is that the share of known hydro renewable energy has to increase to 65 percent from 11 percent today known hydro renewable energy how are you going to manage it okay share of electric cars in passenger sales has to go up from 1.1 percent to 75 percent by 2040 will people ever buy cars in such a large number that's the point here so share of fossil energy in primary energy has to decrease from 73 to 40 percent okay fossil energy keeper dependence aapko kam karni hai. do you have any other cheap alternative i am asking this thing do we have any cheap alternative here? Certainly not. That's the problem here. Yes, sari problem. Hai. Okay. So we have this NDC target. Like we have committed of installing 175 gigawatts of renewable energy capacity by 2022. Okay. So country had achieved 94 gigawatt comprising 25% share uh, in total installed capacity of power generation. Okay. If large hydro installed capacity is included, then India's non fossil energy capacity is 139 gigawatts. We are still very short or far away from the target. That's the major concern for us. Okay. That's the major concern for us. So we'll move to the next part now. Let's move to the international page here. Okay. Sad 25 killed in Kabul hospitals. Okay. So this is the major trouble here. Major in the sense that people are saying that ISKP. Okay. Uh, Islamic state of Khurasan province. Okay. Now it is gaining the ground in that country. Or ye sab ke liye trouble sab ho sakta hai. Because definitely it is going to have some impact or, or other in you also. Okay. India ke andar bhi kuch na kuch impact yaan pe aa sakta hai. That's the threat here. Other than that, let's look into this particular news. Now GOP senators support Katsa waiver for India. Okay. So that's the important thing here. See, you need to understand this thing. US brought this particular arrangement countering America's adversaries through sanctions act of 2017. So whosoever is doing business with America's enemy adversary, they will impose sanctions on that country and these sanctions are primarily economic in nature and world over like country like India and others we are dependent on US for multiple things. Okay. So over the night you cannot done away with your dependence. Ratu ratu nahi khatam hogi aapki dependence. That's the point here. Okay. So that's why uh, like this particular news is important. Why? Because India is buying S-400 anti-missile system from Russia. India is buying S-400 anti-missile system from Russia. And as the transaction is going ahead. So according to Katsa, sanctions should be imposed on India. But their few senators like republican senators three of them they are introducing this idea that okay let's allow let's give waiver to india because of the present situation here so present situation hai usko dekhte hue india ko waiver dena chahiye that's the point that they are making okay that's the point that they are making so but still we have to figure it out how this will move ahead cheeze kaise aise ja rahi hain okay so let's look into this now RBI panel on ARCs this is that is asset reconstruction companies proposes norms for valuers and reserve price okay that how you are going to decide reserve price and all for that norms have been suggested by RBI panel okay but it depends upon how we are going to implement it that's the point here okay so this is what the news says that to streamline the functioning of asset reconstruction companies uh, RBI has come out with a host of suggestions including creation of an online platform for the sale of stressed assets and allowing ARCs 
to act as a resolution applicants during the insolvency process okay so i we see process aapko malum hona chahiye insolvency and bankruptcy court that the government has brought the basic idea is that you have to reduce the non performing assets okay now if we are making such arrangements if we are taking these steps our primary focus is that you have to resolve this issue of non performing asset as early as possible so that you can get decent amount of money okay aapko thoda bahut paisa mil jaye early resolution se for that these particular norms have been suggested the online platform okay for the sale of stressed assets again this is a good initiative that the rbi is suggesting here okay that the rbi is suggesting here other than that there is nothing much in the newspaper so that's it for the day then thank you very much